everybody, this is April Stutzman. We got another episode here for you of Glory Stories. I'm so excited to be interviewing this special guest today to talk about the glory of God, some of the first times they experienced the presence of God, how they cultivated the presence of God, and different stories that impacted their life, whether it was transformation into glory, miracles that happened, and I want you to be a part of what this guest has to say, how they have experienced the heart of God in his presence so that you, my friend, can enjoy their story and see how you too can experience the glory and the presence of God in your everyday life. So I'd like to welcome my special guest that I'm interviewing. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be coming on this morning due to climate control. Just kidding. We're a few minutes late this morning, but that's okay. I'm just excited to see what, what God's going to do through this glory story this morning with Adam Thompson. He should be logging in any minute now. I'm just going to bring him on the camera, so bear with me to uh, get this thing to broadcast. But I just woke up in the glory this morning. I just felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. So I'm just so excited to be able to share with an awesome guest. And um, hey, Aaron, how are you? So just bear with us for a second while we're logging in here and getting this thing to work. And just tell me where you're watching from. And uh, I'm just excited to see what God's going to do this morning. I'm drinking my coffee this morning. How many coffee lovers do we have out there? Uh, arise and shine. Amen. We're doing an early glory story this morning, uh, connecting with Australia. So his time, bless his heart, is like 11 p.m., but I, I'm grateful. And at like 1130, actually, I didn't realize such a time gap. But uh, I'm just so excited to have him on. And there we go. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So Adam, it should be adding you any second now. I see that it's telling me it adds the good old connection. <coughs> hey. <laughs> hey. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Can you hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly. Excuse me a minute. I'm just trying to get myself set up here. Yeah, get yourself set up. I'm having good. some coffee and you're winding down, huh? <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's nearly uh, nearly 11 p.m. here at the moment uh, in Australia. Good meeting mm. tonight? Oh, I was just catching up with some friends. I'm only in town for such a short time. So, awesome. Um, so I'm, uh, when I'm home, I don't get to see uh, many of my friends. So, uh, so I try to see as many as I can. So it's, it's a bit of a rush hour when I'm home. Oh, yeah, I bet. That's awesome. Well, I'm so honored to have you on today. International prophet, best-selling author. Like, you, you're moving signs and wonders and miracles and your dream book. I use it all the time. I love it. <laughs> One of my favorite books for dream interpretation. So just, I just want to thank you for coming on Glory Stories. It's such an honor. Oh, thank you. To, Thanks to for having me. Appreciate it. For, for what you carry in, in the body of Christ and, and what you've sown in years of traveling around the world, I just want to thank you for all that you sacrificed, you know, and all that you oh. poured down. For well, thank you. you, but I, it's all for the glory of God, and uh, it's been a great journey, and I'm really looking forward to God, looking forward to seeing God do more in the next uh in the next year to come, I've got a lot of uh, things happening, but uh, I just come back from South Africa and seen amazing things, and uh, God's been really blessing the, the meetings, the conferences. It's been amazing. That's awesome. What, what part of Africa would you say? Uh, I went to South Africa. I went to uh, Durban, uh, and then I went to uh, uh, Johannesburg. But Durban is a place where one of the God's generals in the 50s called William Branham ministered powerfully there and uh, we just sensed that uh, there was a real uh, there was like a an unlocking of the wells that we were uh, that were welling up back in the 50s something actually supernaturally wow. happened when we were there there was a real move of God we saw some deliverances and healings and miracles and the and the the, the revelatory realm was so strong with the words of knowledge and not just cold calling to the audience uh, 
it was specifically um, words of knowledge over individuals, and we had a uh, we had a great report back just recently, uh, only a few days ago, um, where I had a word of knowledge over a couple, and then when they were standing in front of me, uh, and she, they were barren. Uh, the woman was uh, the 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 wife was barren, and uh, husband and wife, I should say, and. Uh, but uh, there was a word that uh, I, I was, the angel of the Lord um, released visions. I have an angel that stands with me in the power, the, in the presence of God and in the, in the glory. And uh, I uh, had visions that she was uh, having complications with having children. But the word was that, uh, that I really believe that in this, in this case with this couple that, uh, that, that there was going to be a messenger from God that comes through, usually comes through barren women. Uh, and uh, I really believe that uh, she was, I saw it as a vision, so I prophesied that they're going to be with child, even though it was impossible, uh, and the messenger is going to be a messenger from God coming from uh, from your barren womb, and what happened was that uh, uh, we I had an email, or I had a, a text message from the one of the pastors, and uh, she said that uh, she's, the lady, the, the the wife is so excited. She's two weeks pregnant since there was the time when I was there two weeks ago. So, yeah. So, yeah, so if we can pray for her. It, yeah, yeah. Even as you were talking about that, I could feel the glory. I've read some books on William Branham. I think it was like volume yeah. one and two and three. So I believe you're dead on. You know that you're y'all are digging the well. I felt such glory on that. So that is amazing. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of that stuff happens. Somehow there seems to be, uh, I, I have a, there's with the ministry that I've I been mean, doing with Adrian as well, that we have a lot of testimonies of uh, barren couples, have a husband and wife uh, being with children, which um, happens quite really, along with other miracles and healings. And, but, uh, yeah, so that was a really good testimony out of many for South Africa. But South Africa is... Uh, there's something, there's a lot of passion. I've never experienced such hunger before wow. um, in, in, in some of these churches that I was in. So That's yeah. awesome. I've been to Kenya, but I haven't been. Yeah, I haven't been to South Africa yet, but I've been to Kenya, and that was awesome. I went with Charlie Champ, Champ's team to help with a crusade, but uh, I can't wait. Oh, it's good, to good. <laughs> well, you should. It's a real, the people are wonderful, and there's a lot of, a lot of hunger there at the moment, so. Praise yeah, God. Yeah, right? Amen. And that's all you want is hunger in a meeting. And uh, you know, if you know, if you've got a place that's very hungry and passionate for God and you're ministering, it's it's easy. It's like fishing with dynamite, you know. So. <laughs> Makes it for an easy plowing ground, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I just uh, wanted to ask you some questions about the glory because I just honor the gifts and callings that you have on your life. So just tell me, like, how did you first, the first time or, or a time that really meant a lot to you when you first experienced the glory of God? Um, okay. I, um, uh, I've been born again in the, since 1986. I got born again and, uh, you know, I got, got involved with Pentecostal churches and I prayed in tongues a lot, and I never knew what it really what it was. It meant what it, what it, I never knew what it was to pray in tongues. Really, you sort of didn't really have any teaching. But I got born again, and I baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. But uh, I, when I went to Bible college for a year, uh, I did all the sort of things that I thought was right, and there's nothing wrong with going to Bible college. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I had an encounter a good ten years later. Uh, I got caught up in business and I didn't really sort of, uh, I, God wasn't sort of the priority because I was a businessman. I, would, I wouldn't say I was backslidden, but I was sort of wasn't really mm -hmm. um, passionate for God like I should be. Mm -hmm. But what happened was I hit kind of depression in, in the 1998. And, uh, but mm -hmm. uh, long story short, I had a visitation from the Lord and I had such an impartation and an encounter of the glory but it, was, it wasn't just the glory. It was a visitation of the Lord standing there before me Amen. Uh, in my living, living room. But the presence was so thick and the glory was so thick. I felt a bit like Isaiah when you read about Isaiah. I felt unclean before the Lord. So I had mm -hmm. to sort of go through this process of repentance because the glory was so strong. But it was one of these out of God's sovereignty. It was one of these encounters and visitations that I had. 
where I uh, it turned my whole life upside down. And <laughs> since that encounter back in 1998, I kind of went into into ministry. My whole life went into ministry, and and I had such a hunger and a passion. And uh, through that encounter, and I won't go into detail because we probably don't have a lot of time to share it. But through that encounter, I uh, uh, I had the ability to understand dreams, uh, to unlock mysteries. It's it's like another language, um, and uh, so you know that's out of that was my first experience of the glory of God and the wow. presence of God and the encounter I had. Uh, and since then, I mean, I actually experience it every time I minister now so amen so it really transformed you and really impacted the rest of your life completely completely I mean you know I had this Pentecostal experience and baptized in the Holy Spirit and the presence of God and, and um, but you know in the 80s but when I had this visitation from the Lord uh, it was it was such a heavy level of God's glory um, I kind of sort of, it changed my life so much where I kind of, nothing else was important. Mm -hmm. And I made money and I was a businessman, but my priorities were wrong. I was putting the cart before the horse where money was kind of driving me rather than God. So there's nothing wrong with money. Yeah. But, but what happened with it is that I believe that once you have an encounter with the Lord and you have that intimate relationship and you're, and you're walking um, the way Jesus walked, 1 John 2, 6, and you're moving in a realm. Money is important, but money is a secondary, and you basically you need money for crusades and yeah. whatnot. But I had things back to front, so when I had this encounter, I sort of kind of let everything go for what I, I, what I knew about and what I was doing, and then I went into full-time ministry eventually, so my life was turned upside down. But with this encounter... That glory I had, I wouldn't be able to. I don't believe if I didn't have that. If I didn't have that encounter, I don't believe I'd be able to have the gift of interpreting dreams. So. Wow, amen. Mm. And mm. You're, you're, you guys, I've seen you guys in action, just interpreting dreams and miracles and signs and wonders. So I agree, a hundred percent. I believe that impartation you got was amazing. You've impacted thousands upon thousands in the dream realm. So what would you say if somebody was trying to position themselves, you see encounter in the Word, in the Bible, encounter, people encounter Jesus all the time. What would you say to somebody that's, okay, I want to experience Jesus. I don't want to just read about him. What would you say are some of the things that they could position themselves to experience more of Jesus? Are you talking about existing believers? Right? Yes, existing yeah. believers. Yeah. Okay, well, um, my... my uh, I teach this is there's one thing to task pray and you know the grace of God is amazing grace the grace of God's over our lives once you become a Christian born again you confess with your mouth you believe in your heart you're, you're born again it's a gift God will never take that gift off you unless you throw it away right I really believe that but however um, fulfilling the destiny Amen. Fulfilling a destiny is different to, than than the, the the grace and the gift of salvation. But God wants us to fulfill the destiny, and God gives us the grace to do that as well. But when we stand before the Lord, it's important for for me. My eternity is wants. I want my eternity to have well done, good and faithful Amen. servant. But with that, you need an intimate relationship with Jesus. Amen. Right? Uh, and God wants us to be intimate with Him and. There's task praying, and I don't know if you know what I mean by task praying, where you just have a list yeah. of things God wants you to pray yep. about. You pray for your family, you pray. <laughs> I think everybody you know. does that at some point, right? <laughs> I mean, I've got a prayer list. It's, it's as long as, you know, it's, 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 I've got, it's on my phone, and I, I go through and I pray for people, individuals, and, um, and that's important. We need to yeah. do that. But I believe devotions is different. Devotions has a lot to do with meditation. Amen. Right? And meditation is is using your imagination. Okay? Amen. And uh, I believe when you devote yourself to the Lord and you come to that intimacy, when you just worship Him, come to that time of worshiping and and praising Him, entering into the presence, because we can do that. And then God wants you to just to soak. But while you're soaking, just meditate, m meditate on His Word. And it says in Isaiah twenty six verse three. 
if you steadfast your mind towards the Lord, you'll come into perfect peace. Amen. And and in the Greek, sorry, not in the Greek, in the in the Hebrew, when it mentions about your mind, it means yetzer. It says yetzer in the in the Hebrew, which means creative imagination. Uh, Amen. So God wants us to use our creative imagination and wrap it around the Word of God and simulate the Kingdom of God and, and uh, with the with your imagination, right? And the more you do that, as I call it mental gym, and. Uh, when you go, when you're actually meditating on the word, because it says in Psalms chapter one, if you meditate on my word day and light, night, you become like a tree planted next to a stream and you'll bear fruit. So what happens is the more I meditate on this word day and night, meditate, I see myself doing things, doing the impossible with the word of God. Amen. I see myself being intimate with the Lord. I just use my creative imagination. What happens is, after a while, the more you meditate and the more you pursue the Word of God and pursue God with your imagination, something opens up. You're actually opening the door. Amen. And you start to have encounters. You start to have visitations from the Lord. And you, you in your dreams as well, in your dream life, you have dream encounters by mm. because you've been pursuing it with your mind. And that's when you start to come in and you have visitations from the Lord. And I have a lot of visitations from the Lord. I had uh, a dream encounter, actually encounter from the Lord a couple of nights ago. And that comes with just using your imagination. And there's nothing wrong with using your imagination. All right, so I want to encourage believers out there. Task praying is great. Believing the grace of God's over your life. But just when you come to that place of the presence of God and worship, just start meditating on him. Start meditating on the scripture. If you need healing, meditate on Isaiah 53 verse 5. By his stripes we're healed and start imagining yourself doing things that uh, doing the impossible that you can't do with your body. Just start imagining it. Uh, you know, imagine Isaiah 40 that you, you know, you're not, you're not weary. You're, you're running and you're even being lifted up with the wings of an eagle. You know? So that's how, how I do it when I have my encounters and, and my dream life changes dramatically. I have visions in the night spontaneously. It's not just with my fabricated imagination. It kind of goes on cruise control and then I open the door because Jesus is knocking on the door and if you open it, he'll come in and eat with us, uh, Revelation 3.20. Yeah, amen. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. I love what you said because they don't take um, the imagination and its original design was for God. And people use it as, you know, different. They, they kind of try to pervert the imagination. But if you were dead on about soaking and it's doing what you see the Father doing. So you're exactly. watching him in your imagination. And that's what Jesus did. So you're modeling cultivating the glory and doing what you see the father doing with your imagination mm. and you're seeing mm. the eyes of your heart like Ephesians talks about. Mm. I believe Jesus went up to the mountain when he spent time in the mountain. I believe that's what he was doing because he, he was as a man, he had to go through the same process of how to be intimate with his father. You know? Amen. So the, the word says we go from glory to glory. So I love that you make yourself available to see what the Father's doing to perform it on earth. Mm, amen. So um, I know when you guys prayed for me at, 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 I think it was a Todd Bentley's conference, my dream life went through the roof. So I just want to thank you for that input. Yeah. Because, we get a lot. <laughs> we get a lot of it. We get a lot of that all over the world. They say, what have you done to us, you know? Um, but um, even when I talk to people, they say, you know, when I talk to you, I forgot completely what I was dreaming last night. But when I talk to you, it reminds me, you just, I just remember this dream I had last night. Go so, for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Do whatever you but, want I'm, but I'm just saying, when people talk to me, they say, I just remember this dream I had last night. I don't know what it is about you. Every time I talk to you, I remember a dream I had. Wow. So. That's yeah. awesome. You pull it out of people because that's what you carry. Yeah, amen. Amen. So I know so, uh, I, I love dreams because it feels like it's 2020 in the spirit realm. 20 vision at night, I'm seeing at night, and then visions during the day. So it's like 2020. So uh, Yeah, I get more visions than dreams, actually. More visions than dreams. Wow. That's awesome. I stand, I, even when I'm standing up at the pulpit. See, when you talk about the glory, and this is your topic when it comes to your show, is that um, that encounter I had with the Lord is one thing, but every time I go, and you probably notice this, and I only missed it one meeting just recently where before I'm, you're moving the gifts, I always 
bring everybody into that place of just a few minutes of free worship Amen. and really just, just give glory to Jesus and give glory to the Father. And the Holy Spirit's the only one that can reveal the Father and the Son. And we come into this free worship and what happens is it's like a portal opens up Amen. And, we, and heaven just manifests in the natural. Amen. around us and you sense the glory of God and then it's easy to minister like that and that's when I start to have the encounter because what happens you line up under the cascade of the angelic realm Amen. and uh, like when, when Jesus said to Nathaniel you're going to see greater things you'll see angels ascending and descending so you start to interact with the angelic realm and that's when I get the visions I can get visions while I'm ministering standing up and I start to see over people's life and, and we can all do it I'm not saying that you know, this is exclusively for me. We can all actually activate this, and God wants us to walk in that realm. Because you quoted that one, uh, you quoted that John five scripture that Jesus said, "I only do what I see my Father does." Yes. and that's how we we need to roll. You know. Amen. And there's such a, a testimony of glories that come in under the presence of God. Do you want to share a few testimonies of? Some of your favorite miracles you've seen as the presence of God in the angelic realm has opened up to you. Okay, well, um, going back about seven, six years ago now, 2012, I was actually in my hometown, and, uh, which is very rare. But I was actually um, on the staff of a church called Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. If you were listening out there, if you want to look at uh, fieldofdreams.org, mm -hmm. um, it's a church in Adelaide which has amazing teaching and it's very prophetic. And uh, I was on yeah. staff there. I'm not anymore, but I'm, I'm one of the. They still honour me as a as part of the founding, you know, part of the planning process of the church. But I was ministering in a conference outside of just outside of the town, and I had this visitation at night uh, when I was doing the soaking as I was doing that. The meditation and this is when I was doing a conference just outside of town and I'm finishing up on the conference and I had this encounter now I had with the presence and the glory of God I, I through this encounter when I actually just went to this partial sleep mode I got caught up into the realm at the Lord's table I used to have these visits I don't I haven't had I've only had three of them wow. where I got caught up on the Lord's table and I'm, Amen. Uh, there's a lot of detailed stuff I won't go into it but it's unusual cutlery and and um, you know, um, you know, there's uh, there's vessels that I've never seen before, really unusual, freaky stuff, which is in the kingdom of God. Amen. But I saw <laughs> I, I saw I saw Jesus in different forms in these diff different encounters. One of them I saw him as a Jewish man, and one of them I saw him as a glorious king. Wow. And he had this this sort of kind of a, a, a crown with a helmet with jewels going down the side, and. Wow. and but his eyes was just, just incredibly the eyes of love, and the and the, the the weight behind his eyes of love was just amazing. But he was a glorious king. But that was another encounter. But but this particular one, I saw at the end of the table this massive. I thought it was a, a massive archangel, wow. but it turned out it was actually the command of the Lord's host. The same type of Whoa. encounter of what Joshua encountered. Wow. And he said to me this weekend, uh, and the weekend was finishing up, but he said that this weekend there's going to be families, darkness, there's going to be demonic powers leaving families. They're going to leave their posts. Wow. You know, the, there's been tormenting families. Wow. So I just thought, I remember vividly, he picked up this goblet, which is really looked like a gravy boat with a gold stem. It was crystal. Wow. And it had wine in it. And he said, "This is I mean, this is pretty out there, but I want you to be open-minded to the viewers because Ezekiel saw some crazy stuff. So just bear with me. Stay with me. Amen. All right? I'm tracking you. <laughs> so, 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 but he gave me this. He, he handed me this great, this uh, goblet, whatever it is, is, full of wine. And it was the wine of warfare. Right? Wow. So I drank this stuff, and it was just the incredible impartation of joy. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know it says in the scriptures, he who sits in the heavenlies laughs. Amen. Uh, laughs at the enemy's plans. You know. Amen. Long story short, I uh, there were, he said some other things, but anyway, I want to get quickly to this point. I I was at the meeting. I was at Field of Dreams, uh, the church, and I said, I explained the encounter I had, the encounter. I shared the testimony. I said, look, um, 
I'm going to act out this wine of warfare and give people a drink mm. and just act it out. Wow. And those who are feeling tormented, feeling like their family's coming under attack, I want you to come up the front. Anyone, anyway, just people falling down the power, just rolling around laughing wow. their heads off. And usually when, the, you know, my experience in some cases when someone falls to the ground and they're in hysterically laughing, mm -hmm. it means the stronghold has fallen, you know. Amen. Uh, Amen. The enemy's done a runner, you know what I mean? Amen. So, so I did, this woman came up to me and said to me, my, she was upset, she was beside herself, she said, my mother is in a coma wow. uh, and they tested her pain threshold. She's not responding, so she's like, they, they believe she's brain dead. And uh, they're preparing the funeral. The family's preparing the funeral. And she's beside herself. And she said, my mother's an atheist. Wow. And I said, look, and I said to her, mm -hmm. look, uh, you don't need to be afraid. I had this encounter. The Lord said that uh, the enemies fled from the family. Oh, and I said, your mother's going to be all right. You know? So mm -hmm. I gave her this. I acted out this wine of warfare, touched her lips. And she hit the ground. And she was probably for a good 20 minutes or more laughing, rolling around hysterical. Mm -hmm. But she told me after she felt like a blindfold went <laughs> lifted off her head. Wow. Powerful. Like darkness lift. Anyway, what she said to me is that um long story short, she went to the her mother the next day and she was the mother was sitting up on a bed, called her name. Wow. Come Came on. out of the coma. And the doctors were like they didn't you know <laughs> oh, that's they didn't like, have any explanation. Time, right? They didn't have any explanation for it. Love but it. They, the thing is about this, they actually cancelled the funeral and wow. she became born again. She Thank received Christ, God. became born again. Uh, so that's probably uh, a significant testimony if you ask for one. That's, uh, yeah. you know, the, a lot of, we have many things like this happen all the time. It's kind of like that scripture. The Lord just showed you and gave you an encounter that he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. That's what you were Amen. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, amen, amen. Um, if, if people are, are stepping into the dream realm, is there any um, pointers you can give for people that are, are trying to um, experience more dreams or learn to interpret their dreams? Is there anything you want to share? Okay, <clears throat> there's a lot to it, but let me just say this. Um, uh, what you meditate on mm. helps you with your dreams. Okay. Amen. That's Someone good. says to me, Christians can have nightmares. Mm. And um, now look, I'm all for the grace of God. The grace of God blows my mind. And, mm. um, but, um, but when they say everything's all finished, you don't have to do anything, I don't agree with that. I don't either. Because people say that to me and they, they go, you know, it's all done. I go, well, how come you're still sick, you know? <laughs> Yeah. So you still. <laughs> yeah. So you, do, late, <laughs> so you do have to fight the fight of faith, and you need to actually stand on the word and contest and really believe that it's okay. You need to position yourself with that because it's in. It's actually the truth. Yeah. It's already done in principle, uh, legally, and you just need to stand on that as you do go to court, and you need to stand on the law and challenge it. You know, mm -hmm. it's the same principle. So, but with with the Christians having nightmares. Uh, it can be several things, but also some can be things like people meditating on the wrong thing. They might be obsessed wow. with fear. They might be full of anxiety. They might have watched a lot of horror movies when they're younger and they're mm -hmm. prone to fear. They've opened the wrong door in the spirit. And that doesn't mean they're not saved. The grace yeah. of God is incredible, like I said, but they, can, they might have opened the wrong door and they're in giving permission as a mind path. That's why it's important to renew your mind. And meditation that plays a big part of renewing your mind creating mind paths into the streamlined revelation of, of the Messiah. But what happens is believers need to change their thinking and, and the meditation does change your dream life. Wow. Okay. Some wow. people do just like, even with the, some people might be caught up in pornography. I mean, I'm just saying yeah, as it is, yeah. uh, if you get offended for me saying that, but that's just a reality. Some Christians get it's caught true. up with that. They do. And mm -hmm. uh, if you're meditating on that, then you open up the wrong door and you have these dreams that are uh, demonic. You know, because yeah. you're giving permission to the enemy to attack Amen. you. Uh, it might be even, you know, violence, you know, watching war movies or, I mean, yeah. it's nothing wrong, wrong sometimes watching certain things that uh, portray reality of what happened with our heroes, you know. Uh, but sometimes if you're meditating, obsessed with violence, it can open the wrong door. Amen. Um, uh, and you can allow the enemy to intimidate you. So 
and also trauma as a child. If you had trauma in any part of our life, like car accidents or abuse, yeah. uh, the door can be opened up and that's when you can give permission for the enemy to attack you. So I would say meditation can change wow. your, your dream life when you direct your meditation towards the Word of God and the promises and even the Scriptures, first of all, with your identity of who you are in Christ. Amen. You start to see yourself being a, a priest, a royal priest, part of the royal family. You start to be creative with that. Then you start to position yourself for godly dreams. Amen. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It really seems like the power of meditation has impacted your encounter realm and your dream life. So that's powerful. It's, you know, people freak out when you use, use the word meditation or or trances we all go, it's actually trances are scriptural amen I've had, yeah and um i mean as christians some christians complain to me about trance they think i'm into new age but they might sit there and go in a trance watching television you know so. <laughs> it's so true <laughs> but, uh, but it's, it's god first <clears throat> he sold it from us it was originally yeah. in the bible we were the original yeah. god was the originator of trances period yeah, and even when you read about the book of Acts with, with Peter the, on the rooftop, yes. he went to a trance and he had that envision. And so trance is when you're not awake and you're not asleep, you're sort of crossing over. When you're sitting there after that, you just, it's a safe place when you're worshipping and in the presence. And then you're sort of lying there and you're just crossing over to that sleep mode and you're getting these images coming through your mind. Amen. That's a trance and that's a, you're getting visions in that trance state. Amen. That's kind of like Maria Woodworth Edder. You remember Maria yeah. Woodworth Edder? The, the yes. Yeah. That opened yeah. up during the evangelism. It's awesome. Stuff. <laughs> Amen. Powerful. You know? I remember <laughs> one time you were talking about half awake, half asleep. And as I go to bed, I would pray in tongues one time. And uh, I just had like a vision of, of me with a sword. And it's like I went into a trance with. Um, the sword of the Lord in my mouth, and I was just like a mighty warrior. And as I was oh, that's praying, a good one. Whoa! As I was praying in tongues, the enemy was just defeated, and I could feel the power of God just shoot out of the sword in my mouth when I was praying in tongues. And it, it like you said, it impacts wow. you. Whoa! It just wow. impacts the way you do things. And that's what I see. Well, when you pray in tongues, you're like a Gatling gun in the spirit. Like, oh, I can't, I can't <laughs> <laughs> but, I, love, uh, and that's, I, I love what you said well, because it's about applying it too, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prayed in tongues for years um, after that encounter I had with the Lord in the living room. I I had such a revelation when it was to speak in tongues and a lot of Pentecostal churches aren't Pentecostal anymore. Yeah. But I think it's time we get back to it. And I, I mean, there's different manifestation of tongues, as it mentions in First Corinthians 14 and... Um, but, um, and also Romans 8, um, we are to groans that words cannot express. But, uh -huh. um, but I do believe the self edification tongues, it brings us in line and it helps us to walk in the spirit. And also, and it get, it, it, it utter, we utter mysteries and it helps us to be lining up with the kingdom of God and we become a vessel between heaven and earth. Yeah, come on. And, and I love it in other cultures. They're so versed in the supernatural that, they, you know, a lot of times they go in a counterfeit. But here in America, we have to push and train and equip for the supernatural. But if you go to Africa or you go to Indonesia, they're already tapping in. So it, it's bringing the lordship of Jesus Christ over these supernatural experiences and, and drawing the line and say it was Jesus's first, you know. Just like I'm sure you've experienced that in South Africa. And Amen that you've been. So hey, man, I'm feeling the anointing on you. It's, you, you yeah. I'm feeling <laughs> the anointing. Go for it. If you got a word, just share it. No, I'm feeling the anointing on you, I should oh. say. <laughs> well, it's just, it's just amazing to think about the power of meditation. Like you said, it's like you're saying, 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 it's like for dreams, visions, encounters, trans yeah. or whatever I've received right now, I just impart. But um, I just, I just love what you guys, you and Adrian both, what you guys walk in because the supernatural was God's first. 
and, and you're living a, a model like just Jesus did, experiencing the glory, experiencing the presence of God, and then you're going around doing this stuff, and you're equipping. So it's not yeah. just all about you. Yeah. The equipping mantle that you guys carry is just amazing. To yeah, to get people. Let me say this. Place. You know, uh, let me say this. I'm look. I'm. I've been accused of being a prophet once or twice, and that's my <laughs> calling, right? But, you know, and there's time and a place, and I say this all the time, but there's time and a place for prophetic words. You don't go looking for it. It comes looking right. for you, all right? But, Amen. you know, if you're constantly going to a prophet to hear from God, then I believe you're in the error, all right? But yeah. I believe yeah. that you can, hear, you can hear from God out there, those who are listening, those who are Amen. online right now. You, you, we're all prophetic. and. Amen. Um, and we all can hear from God. And I, I just want to encourage you that we, my mandate, and I had an angelic encounter in, in Papua New Guinea. Now, I've been to a lot of places. I've been to a places where <laughs> I should be dead. <laughs> but uh, in Papua New Guinea, in Papua New Guinea is a not a safe place. But I had an angel encounter in the, in the city of Ley in Papua New Guinea. And uh, through that encounter, the Lord showed me that my mandate was to equip the body to be prophetic, to have a prophetic voice. Amen. And, and uh, it says in Hebrews 1 that our forefathers used to go to the prophets to hear from God, but in this new covenant era in the last days, we can hear from God by his son. And we all are prophetic. And I want the body of Christ to hear from God. And, and, I, and I want a company of prophets raising up. And, and that's what, it's not, uh, the days of gurus are over. You know? Amen. I mean, I mean, I know I look like a guru if I was in China, but <laughs> but but, but, um, but you know, I mean, I I'm, I don't believe in gurus. I believe that we're Amen. all um, we're all uh, sons and daughters. We're all priests, royal royal priests of the kingdom. However, I do believe we're going to honor and respect leadership, and we need Amen. to have mentors and accountability. Amen. But I do believe God is raising up a company of prophets. And as corporately, we're going to bring change and have influence. Like there is, a, there is the Elijah, the Elijah, in in First Kings seventeen. Uh, there's the spirit of Elijah with John the Baptist. But I believe that were two Old Testament prophets, and they were single men. But this, this, there is an Elijah coming, and it's actually in a form of a body. Amen. It's it's in in a company, and and mm -hmm. it's going to have influence over leaders. It's going to tear down modern day Nebuchadnezzar's, where they're going to actually realize and declare that there's no God like the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Come on. And 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 I really believe that that's coming, but that it's going to be through a corporate company. There's going to be a corporate body of of prophets um, that's going to have the ability to have influence over governments and. Uh, mm and reveal the truth because there's a lot of lies out there. In fact, let me tell you this. Can I tell you this Go about a dream it. I had, a dream encounter? Yeah, yeah. I had a dream encounter. Now, please hear me out. I had a dream encounter the other night of these massive dinosaurs. Wow. Uh, and But they were, I know it's strange, but they look like big, huge Muppets from the Muppet Show. You know those big, oh, wow. huge Muppets? Yeah, yeah. You, you used to get... Huge Muppets, they look like like um, animals, but these were huge, bigger. They were like dinosaurs, but they looked like they didn't look real. And you got to hear me out here. Don't 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 turn the Facebook off when I say this. I was actually I actually eating these these Muppet dinosaurs, right? Dream, yeah. And and they looked like it looked like pancakes when I was eating them. And I thought I woke up out of it. It was so vivid, and I said, Why am I? Lord, that's just that's out there. It's a bit like Peter when he was on the rooftop going. He's wondering what. What 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 are you? What is all that about? He's wondering what the vision meant, you know. So it's like that with me. And the Lord said to me that history, the actual um, dinosaurs, represent historic events. Wow. Because right? wow. dinosaurs, as a metaphor of history. Wow. Right? And the Lord said that there's a lot of historic events that are actually fake. It's not real. Wow. Right? Wow. And it's designed to deceive the minds. It says in Second Corinthians uh, 4, four that the God of this world blinds the minds from the glory of the gospel and the image of God, wow. uh, which is Christ. And, um, uh, and God was showing me that there's a lot of historical things that are just fake and not real. But what's going to happen is that um, 
a lot of the fake news we think lately is there's a lot of fake news out of there out, that are happening right now that's new, but it's actually fake news has been going on more than a century. Wow. Right? And it's just because of technology, Facebook, uh, social media, uh, having a, a video on your fingertips, everybody having a video in their hands yeah. is bringing the fake news to account. It's bringing the truth wow. to account. And God's raising up a, uh, a, uh, raising up an army that's going to mm-hmm. carry the kingdom truths. They're going to be mm-hmm. vessels from heaven to earth. It's going to release the truth on earth. It's going to prime the minds and the hearts of unbelievers. It's going to realize they've been lied to. Wow. And it's going to be, the, it's going to be one of the biggest world revivals. Come on. It's going, to be, it's going to be a billion soul harvest coming through this. The Lord has shown me through this encounter. I know it's pretty out there, but God speaks to us in parables and, in, in, and he speaks to us in riddles. But there's, there's a, we've been lied to for years uh, about things that are going to come out of the wash, a lot of historical things that are going to come out that's going to be fake. Wow. And, uh, and the history is going to be rewritten. Yeah, amen. I was just checking out your word that you released over uh, California, too. I was just out there. That was powerful. Um, so I, I just love the level of accuracy that you have. It's just awesome. It was like May 31st. It just, you know, it's as, as a glory comes and you become a friend of God. Wouldn't you say it's just the overflow? Yeah, it is. And God gives you responsibility with these words, and I want me to say another thing. I want to say is that when you get these responsibilities, and you get these, you get the gift. God will give you the responsibility if He trusts mm-hmm. you with the gift, because you can have a gift, but if you don't know how to deliver it with wisdom, yeah. uh, you get yourself in trouble. So I might have a gift. The, the word was about earthquakes in California, and one of them was actually, which hasn't happened yet, was in San Francisco. Yeah. Now I could go blow the wrong sound of a trumpet and scare everybody to run to the hills. That's not what yeah. God's saying. Amen. Right. And that's not what we, that's not, I mean, I, I was asking people to pray that the that, that yeah. earthquakes aren't going to be catastrophic. And there's, I mean, recent earthquakes that weren't, didn't kill anybody, but yeah. they're pretty Amen. serious earthquakes. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of friends out there, so I agree with you. Time to, it was time to pray, you know? Yeah. And San Francisco, I saw it shaking, Amen. but that was a prophetic sign of, um, of a major revival on the West Coast. Come on. And, uh, and, I, and the word was that um, what happened with the Azusa Street revival, mm-hmm. the earthquake that it took place uh, back at the turn of the last century with the Azusa Street revival, people ran to the revival. It was only about something like just over 100 people initially. But when the San Francisco earthquake hit, everybody ran to the revival and went for something like 800 to 1,000 people, like 100 to 1,000 people overnight. That'd be a good problem to have, people running. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's good what's, Lord. yeah, and it's going to happen again, but at a larger scale. Amen. Uh, and I remember Charlie Champ was actually had, I didn't realise till afterwards, um, I did not know this, but he had a, a prophetic work about stadium shaking, and, um, Amen. Uh, yeah, and uh, so there's, uh, there's God's speaking to the prophets. Come and, on. Um, it's Charlie's a friend of mine. He's the real deal. Amen. And um, uh, but he is God. God's speaking to the prophets. You've got to be. You've got to be. Um, you've got to be fearless with the prophetic. And you know what? You need to have thicker skin than a politician. <laughs> um, Amen. You do. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, you too. Because you can't. You know. Look, I. I think there's some amazing prophetic ministries out there encouraging people on the internet. And it's, and it's good. It's great. It's yeah. encouraging. Yeah. Um, but sometimes if you get something from the Lord, it might be a bit pretty out there. You need to release it. And yeah. uh, initially they think, some people think that, oh, you know, my cheese has slipped off my cracker. <laughs> you <know>? But, <laughs> but you've got you, you to release it and just do it fearlessly and go, okay, Lord, you've spoken to me. Release it. Yeah. And... What happens is it's the same thing with Australia. I had a prophetic word that went into the media in Australia about the Prime Minister being re-elected or getting elected. And he's a born-again Christian, this wow. Prime Minister. And uh, I got into the media and had a lot of people, you know, uh, slammed up me, you know, really lashed out. I had death threats. Wow. Uh, even, even some of the Christians uh, thought I was a bit out there, but... But you know, uh, at the end of the day, when things come to pass, Amen. you get God. God honors you, and uh, wow. and the people start to realize 
the critics go quiet and people do honor you, the ones who are supporting you. So, Come on. Yeah, yeah, I love that because I've watched so many of my prophet friends, which I totally honor and respect in the spirit realm, get, get back. And it's like, you know, you get to the point where, you know, God is your validator. You know, and I'd love to see the Lord just validate my friends over and over and over because signs and wonders were for Jesus. You know, That's and, right. and everybody runs in fear with the verse about false signs and wonders, but you're not in a false sign and wonder if Jesus is the source. <laughs> like, just let them free from fear, Lord. You know, yeah, way. yeah. And some believers that God bless them, and um, some of them are. Yeah. Probably haven't, haven't got any better to think anything better to do but do blogging and attack other Christians. But yeah, but I bless them. But someone will say to me, "Oh, signs and wonders! A wicked generation looks for signs and wonders." And you go, "That's true." If you're waiting around, if you want to move, when you see a sign and wonder, you're waiting for a sign and wonder to move, true. and to act upon God through waiting for a sign and wonder. Yes. A yes. wicked generation waits around and demands a sign of wonder. But mm -hmm. it says in, in Mark 16, go. Mm -hmm. I see, always see a, a green light, a stop, like a traffic light of a green light when I read that scripture. It says, go into the world, preach the gospel. And it said, signs will follow. Come on. So signs and wonders is actually very crucial with, you, with your ministry. And mm -hmm. to me, it's like God is actually... It says even a true apostle moves in the signs and wonders. Amen. Come on. Right, and uh, and if you and it says the end of Mark sixteen, it says the signs and the wonders is a confirmation of the preaching of the word. Come on, that's Power. pretty heavy. So if you're preaching, are you are you doing is signs and wonders following your preaching? Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. So that's that's important. Yeah. Somebody asked a question, and you may have more <laughs> of a grid for this than I will. They asked, "Will melatonin affect your dream life?" I don't know if you've had any experience or anybody asked that before. Because I travel so much, I'm sort of like wandering the earth. Bless your heart. <laughs> more grace on him, Lord. More grace on him. Uh, I sometimes have to use melatonin. In fact, it's better than the, the drug. Because uh, yeah, I don't like to take the drugs. And, you know. But um, I do take melatonin sometimes. I have to. But I don't think it does affect your dream life. I do believe. I believe if you're act, active in the spirit and you're praying in the spirit a lot, and you're using your med imagination, your meditation, Amen. I don't think it should affect. I mean, unless you're not, as long as you're not taking it all the time and you're yeah, yeah. dosing yourself up with it. But Amen. if you use it every now and then, if it's nat natural, I don't have a problem with it. And I don't. Th I don't think it shuts down your dream life. You. Some people just don't dream at all when they yeah. don't take any melatonin, but they're. Yeah. They're probably using some intellectual people don't dream a lot because wow. there's a different part of their brains wired up. So that's why meditation is really important. That's a really good point because I've had people ask me, like, what can I do to um, get more dreams? Because my husband's like, I want to dream more, I want to dream more. And then he hears me saying, I had three dreams last night. So he's like, come on, why can't I have some more? So it's funny that you say intellectual because he's. Uh, analytical, but he also sees in the spirit. But I've watched over time, like you said, the meditation to be a key point to open up my dreams for him. It does, and praying in the spirit. I must admit, when I, the more I pray, if I, especially if I do a thirteen-hour flight. I pray in the spirit, and then um, I get to see. I go into visions more. Sometimes I have visions. Wow! It's almost like it's almost like that Nicolas Cage movie when <laughs> you, you know you have you have visions two minutes before it happens. You know, like uh, if you're praying in the spirit, you become very sensitive to the spirit realm. Amen. I find mm. that out too, especially like what you said, like moving in words and knowledge. The more I pray in the spirit, it seems like the mind of Christ just unlocks. It's true, true, yeah, hundred just, percent. Just, just um, how to pray for people, like getting strategies, how to pray for people, like you said. With that yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I'll never ever respond unless I get something from God. I and mean, some people can, I don't know, they might. Some people are wired differently, but for me, if I get a word of knowledge, sometimes it's out of season. If I'm in the airport and you go, you know, yeah, yeah. and I get a vision yeah. about someone, and you've got to step <laughs> out and you, you're and like, you start oh, God, ministry. No, God. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but God, 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 the glory, the presence of God manifests when you start to step out. 
So I want to encourage you to be ready in season, out of season. But when you pray in tongues, God will, God will challenge you out of season, you know. Amen. Mm. I've seen him do that in my life, and it's just like mm. it's about obedience, you know. That's it. And, and the more you use it, the more it happens, you know. Um, uh, if you don't use it, you'll lose it, I believe. Come on. Mm, I really believe that. You, um, if, you know, I know some people that are just shut down the prophetic. They're very prophetic, but they shut it down. Wow. And God will just find somebody else. <clears throat> What do you think some of the things they're doing to shut it down? Just not being obedient or what do you think? Just, just, not stewarding it? Just not being in the spirit, not spending time with the Lord. Wow. You know, eating, eating pizza, watching Netflix all the time. Come you know? <laughs> <laughs> <Break> it. <laughs> I know, it's you so know. funny. You know, I, I even felt, you know, a little convicted. I watched a movie the other night, you know, and I, I haven't watched one in like weeks. And I sat down and watched it and I thought, even it wasn't a bad movie, but I'm like, this didn't benefit my spirit at all. Why don't I just go watch like Bethel TV? Like, this is dumb, you know. I just wanted to veg because I had been biz busy. Crying. Yeah, yeah, but we could so every now and then it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I get it though. You just come yeah. home, yeah. You're you know, like, my yeah. daughter, my daughter <laughs> wants to watch Cinderella or something, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's okay. But I know what you mean. Sometimes you go. You do sometimes you might watch a, a movie more than you should, and you go, oh, it's, it's, just, it's just getting a bit carnal, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I mm. love, you know, like you said, it's your ear gates and your eye gates, and, and it brings out yeah. meditation. And I thought, man, I could have, I, I watched Bethel TV or something that's supernatural, and it keeps me in the realm. Yeah, that's you know, right. Keeps you, keeps you flowing. You know? um, my kids used to, we always got this time life. Um, uh, videos of the Bible and um, the movies of these characters and my kids watch used to watch it all the time and uh, that burns in their memory but they always used to sort of imitate even today as adults they imitate the characters you know it's quite funny mm -hmm. so there's nothing wrong with that you know yeah amen so the Holy Spirit's telling me to ask you um, when you first started writing books could you share any encouragement somebody I feel like there's somebody on here that's had an encounter and they're, maybe they're trying to get the courage or just to steward the encounter to write a book. If you want to share anything the Lord leads you. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've learned a lot out of this because I really initially wasn't an author. I was dyslexic when I was a kid. Wow. Powerful. So um, and they never knew what it was when I was a kid. So I thought I was mentally disabled. But... <laughs> But I shouldn't laugh at it, but that was that bad. But now wow. they discovered that dyslexic people who are dyslexic are actually over creative, you know, and wow. um, uh, and they're and they're actually um, quite intelligent. Uh, Richard Branson was dyslexic, uh, who was a wow. billionaire, um, uh, you know, uh, who um, is a very successful businessman. He's not a Christian, but he was dyslexic. So, but I. Well, let me say this. I had these encounters. Uh, I had many encounters, seen many miracles. And um, I would say to write a book, just start documenting the, the – probably already – people out there have already documented their encounters and revelation they've had. Wow. And once you start documenting them down, uh, I would just from chapter to chapter, I always kind of have an outline. I, I put in an outline of what God wants to say, the theme about the book. But at the same time, when you, you know, you can, I don't believe you can just have all book on teaching. Now you can, if it's a manuscript or if it's a, yeah, an assignment uh, manuscript for teaching or for a school or as a curriculum. Yeah. And I understand that. But to write a successful book, if you're writing a book, let me just say this. If you do a a biography on yourself, a book label company will not take it on unless you're someone really massive like Heidi Baker. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they won't take it on, right? Yeah. Because unless you really already made an impact and uh, yeah. and you're a household name, okay? Yeah. But um, but you can have a bit of a bio in your uh, initially as an intro, but and share your encounters. But with long as the encounters actually have some sort of teaching with it. Amen. And equipping some sort of equipping out of it, Amen. and uh, and you're backing up with the scriptures. And if there's teaching, there's funny stories, but also <laughs> testimonies through Amen. it. 
that's what makes a very good book. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what makes people and but the thing is, you ask the Holy Spirit. The most important thing is for the Holy Spirit to give you the guidance and have the anointing on it. The Supernatural Man is another book I've written, which is a bestseller. It, Sid Roth actually promoted it when I went on the first time with Sid Roth program. Mm -hmm. um, that actually has the anointing on the book, and it's my first book I've written on my own. Of, uh, wow. Apart from, I did a few with Adrian before that, but. Um, the supernatural man it has an anointing on the book, um, but there's it's encounters. It's my a little bit of my testimony, encounters, teaching, equipping, humour, and mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the, with that, the most important things people say. I feel the anointing. I feel the impartation. Oh. I had a guy who flew to London, and uh, halfway through the London, he rang me from Dubai and said, "Man." What is with this with this book? I said, why? Because I had a visitation in heaven when wow. I was on the plane. <laughs> wow. Come on. So ask the Holy Spirit to just, when you, you spend a lot of time when you're writing the book in, in his presence and uh, praying in the spirit. Uh, but I would just say that just, just teaching on its own, yeah. uh, you know, it's not necessarily going to be uh, a bestseller, I don't believe, unless... Yeah. Unless you are actually a um, uh, a teacher and you have great revelation out of it, but you do need to back it up with testimonies. You do need to back it up with with substance of miracles and signs and wonders, and the testimony that may be a part of your biography, a, a part of it. But don't put all biography or don't put all teaching Come on. in it. Uh, it just needs to be spread out, and, and humor is always good as well. <laughs> so for people that are watching and haven't got your book. That specific book, it's called The Supernatural Man. It's a supernatural man. You get it on uh, Amazon. Um, uh, you can you get it, you know, uh, you probably can get it in the local Christian shop. Uh, if you're an Australian, you can get it in the Curon bookstore, the Word bookstore. Um, mm -hmm. It's pretty much all over the place. It's available on a lot of, on a lot of also bookstores online. Uh, awesome. Uh, it's, it's, it's a... It's a very well-known book. Um, and The Divinity Code is obviously our best, major bestseller. That's, um, uh, the, the Supernatural Man has been translated in about three languages. Wow. Which is quite, yeah. I think my husband just shared the link, you guys. So if you want to order his Supernatural Man book, my husband mm. has the link for you guys to be able to order it. No, sorry, let me say The Supernatural Man has been translated in Korean. Wow. But also there's a book called From Heaven to Earth, which is my third book. Uh, my second book on my own, sorry. And From Heaven to Earth, that's been translated in uh, in Italian as well. Wow. Uh, and also The Supernatural Man has been translated into German as well. If you're, if you're watching from Germany, you can order that online. Wow. That's mm. awesome. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, God's Prophetic Symbolism in Everyday Life is, a, is, is another really good book. Uh, it's about discerning yeah. signs around you For people that oh you got that yeah yeah Gee, you I got that yeah. wow i love all you're your on, stuff you're on the ball <laughs> oh man you gotta get those dreams <laughs> and holy ghosts and books and whatever means he gives me you know, well that one's yeah. that one is uh about you probably obviously you've read it because you've got it it's about discerning signs around you natural signs Amen. Uh, you don't go become superstitious and be silly with it and look for, try and look for every. Ah, but it comes, it comes to you. You know, look for you, and it's Amen. an unusual sign, a bit like with Jeremiah, when he saw the almond tree bud out of season, and he had a prophetic word out of that. So, wow, that type of that's how God speaks to us in the natural. And there's a similar principle when you see something unusual and natural happens. Similar principle of. Interpreting it metaphorically as like dreams. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And, and you can just the testimony and the fruit that's come out of you guys' ministry, like you mm. said, you don't only just talk about it, you do the stuff and the fruit. Yeah. Impact. Yeah. I mean, Adrian's ministry is amazing too. He's a great teacher. Yeah. He's a good friend of mine. I mean, God has put us together when we demonstrate together. Uh, I don't do tag teaming with anyone. Um, but uh, I've tried to, it didn't work, but God actually put Adrian and I together. Love as it. much as we're a bit like Abbott Costello, there's a little bit of humour behind it, but there is a real anointing in it, and we do 
he's an amazing teacher. His, his Hebrew and the Hebrew poetry that he knows is quite incredible. And I'm more of the I'm more of the prophet. He's more of the teacher. But it's, we complement each other. So. Amen. I love team mm. ministry. Right? It's fun. Mm. <laughs> mm. Well, I know I need to probably let you get to bed. Was it like midnight there, probably? Um, <laughs> so, have a look. Wow, it's ten to twelve here at midnight. Wow, wow. So, is there mm. anything you want to pray or impart, whatever you feel led? If it's nothing, it's nothing. Over any of the watchers. Well, watchers, angels, or people? No. Angels, angels. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, uh, just kidding. Uh, yeah, well, those who are listening or online, um, I just want to release. Uh, I just want to. I just want to release such revelation. Um, and uh, that if you if you're there and you're listening or you're watching, just touch the screen on your iPhone or oh, Android or wherever you are, the laptop. And we just decree right now, Father. We thank you that, Lord, your angels move by the speed of thought. And uh, but Lord Holy Spirit, you're here on earth. You're the only evidence can reveal the Father and the Son. Yes. And uh, your Lord, we just thank you for the manifestation of your presence and glory over every individual that's watching. It's every individual that's touching the screen right now. We decree, Lord, there's a, Lord, heaven is invading their environment. We thank you, Lord, that, uh, Lord, that their minds are opening up. We prophesy that their pathways of the mind are coming into divine order right now. We prophesy, Lord, that the angelic realm's opening up. You promised to Nathaniel, Lord, you'll see greater things. You said to Nathaniel, we see greater things. Angels are sending and descending on the Son of Man. Lord, I thank you, Father. That promise you showed Jacob in Genesis 28, the angelic realm, Lord, that you're the door, you're the gate. I thank you for every believer is listening and watching is lining up right now with that gate. And there's a cascade, there's a shower of that, the angelic realm. And we thank you for healing angels. Lord, the, the healing angels in John 5, that same type of healing angel is sending and descending. Lord, the delivering angel, it's over some families in these deliverance right now. We thank you for that. Psalm 34, verse 7, the angel of the Lord came around those who fear him, shall deliver. Lord, we really thank you for the delivering angel that delivered Peter from the hands of Herod and what the Jewish people intend to do to him. That same type of angels released over families. We thank you for setting the captives free and the delivering power of Yeshua. Lord, Isaiah 61, he came to set the captives free. Luke four eight Luke four eighteen for Kath Roko Sika Makira. Shakarapa Roko. We thank you, Lord, for deliverance. We thank you for the wakey wakey angel. The same type of angel that was Zechariah four that woke up Zechariah in the spirit. I thank you, Lord, that the wakey wakey angels are dispatched. Lord, there's many of them. And Lord, we thank you for opening the eyes of their heart. Their eyes are opening up and they're seeing and they're having encounters. I thank you for encounters, Lord. I thank you for, Lord, the supernatural encounters is changing their lives. And they, they, Lord, they're wound up into that place of having passion and, and hunger, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for debt cancellation. Come on. Lord, Lord, Genesis 24, 40, that okay. prosperity angel mm -hmm. that went ahead of Abraham, mm -hmm. that inherit, Lord, that, 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 that angel that went ahead of Abraham with his servant, and there was a breaker anointing, there's prosperity, which is decreed right now. In the name of Yeshua, we decree the curse of debt is broken, and we thank you for the transaction, the gold bars of heaven, exchanging the human mm -hmm. currency, and those who are touching the screen, we thank you for financial breakthrough. They're no longer under the system. They're no longer under the sweat of the brow, under the Esau system. They're under that Isaac, Jacob. Oh, Lord, they're above the system. We thank you, Lord. They're, they're seated in heavenly places. And Lord, that uh, the debt cancellation is taking place right now. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I just decree also the prophetic, the revelatory angel. This is the last one. Lord Jesus, we thank you that same type of angel that went to John the Apostle, the revelatory angel. Lord, we release that over every believer here right now. This prophetic mantle has been released upon everyone. 
And I thank you, Lord, that I have, Lord, understanding the revelation of Jesus Christ. Lord, that same type of angel, Lord, as a Gabriel brought insight, the same type of angel that brings insight right now, the Daniel. We release that. The revelatory angels are sending and ascending over every believer that's listening, that's watching today, tonight. Whatever time it is, Lord, we release it right now. Harika Mahia Sika. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. That's when the glory starts pouring through. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, we got more. Go for it. If not, whatever you want. I don't know what it is. I had this vision. I just want to just release one. This, if I get a vision, I always say, it. I mean, it's probably mm -hmm. probably not a big deal to, to some of the viewers, but when you're having this problem, it is a big deal. Someone with their eyes, like a right eye, just keeps, it's been happening throughout the day so far, or might have been yesterday, depends where you are. But the eye is like a the nervous condition in the eye where it just keeps vibrating. Wow. And, and uh, there's somebody who has a problem with that, and it's really annoying. It doesn't hurt, but it's just annoying, and you're wondering what's going on. You're wondering whether there's something wrong with your brain or something like that. But, um, but I, I just prophesy divine order. It's not, not a big, it may not be a big deal for many, but it's, it's a big deal for this person. Amen. I prophesy, I command that eye to be still. I command the nerves to come into divine order. In the name of Jesus. It's a woman. Now I decree that right now. But Thank her you. eye is restored in Jesus' name. And we prophesy that her body's coming in divine order as well. Yes. Lord. Oof. Ooh. Hallelujah. That's all. Mm. Wow. Mm. Hallelujah. Ooh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And even as you're releasing that, um, Michelle Thomas is watching. And uh, Michelle, I just, as we open up a realm and the glory is going here, I just, um, I see a gift of writing on you. And I just thank the Lord that the Lord is unlocking Michelle Thomas. He's just unlocking new realms of revelation, like what Adam was talking about. To just uh, transcribe your encounters. Just mm. transcribe your encounters and steward it like Adam was talking about. Just that Amen. You'll bring, you'll bring the breaker for your writing in people's lives in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your blessing. I can't see any names that's coming up. It doesn't matter. But um, yeah. we thank you, Lord, for everyone who's been watching. We decree that in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. And see if you spill this out on that wine that you drank. Um, you want to impart any of that, that warfare wine mm. that you ever mm. watching? Lord, we just thank you, Father. Just wherever you are, if you're watching it, just use your imagination. Just hold, hold the... A, like a goblet in front of you, and we just right now in Jesus' name, we just drink it. Just, yeah. just be creative with the imagination because God wants you to see it with your eyes, your mind's eyes. And this is different to receiving spontaneous visions. And just be creative with the imagination. Just, just drink this wine of warfare, and this wine smashes the yoke. This yeah. wine. See, when Jesus turned the water into wine in John chapter. In John chapter 2, when you read about this, as, he, as, he, as the disciples witnessed this and actually drank from that wine, you read it, it says he revealed his glory Come on. to his disciples. Whoa. Whoa. He's revealed, he reveals his glory. That's pretty full on for a wedding banquet. The glory gets manifested in the natural. The presence of God is just manifesting around you right now. And as you drink this war, wine of warfare, we do thank you that the, the, someone's daughter who's actually uh, someone who's just been 
uh, their daughters who is a concern that's just getting mixed up with somebody with narcotics, which is break off that demonic power of deception yeah. that's trying to is trying to influence the family. We we thank you that the enemy is defeated. Mm-hmm. We thank you for victory. We thank you, Father, for the glory of God is like a river of wine that's going through the families right now. It's dismantling the powers of hell. And we thank you, Father, for the your angelic realm is released around the families. We thank you that the enemies left their posts. The enemy, the demonic powers, demon demonic powers have left their posts. And we thank you, Father, for angels are sent ahead of those hebrews 1 angels sent ahead of those who inherit salvation shakara mm. baba to make strong your word of knowledge for the eye her name's pamela she said it was her just one okay so pamela we thank you pamela we thank you lord that um, pamela's uh, free we prophesy the nervous condition in her head is completely has been restored into divine order right now. Yeah. We thank you that her muscles are restored. We thank you for the fire of God has been released upon her mind. Yeah. Oh, glory. 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 It's it's a simple thing to others, but for the, but for this woman is uh, uh, it's it's a, an important thing. We thank you for the miracle tonight, today, this morning. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Lord. Where, wherever you are. Yeah, come on. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Somebody, I don't know, this is. Someone Go probably for it, will, man. will. Go for someone it. Someone probably mm-hmm. will message you later or me. Or later. It might be what, what might not be watching that, but. And sometimes we have this in conferences, but someone had a dream with me in it. And um, I don't know if you're watching online, if anybody had a vision or a dream with me in it. And it's not to bring glory to myself. I don't have any delusions of grandeur. Um, but there's a metaphor of a, of a transaction, of a prophetic transaction. And don't just say, yeah, I want a, pro- want a prophetic transaction. Like, yeah, I, ha- I think I had a dream of you <laughs> Just, it's got to be a real thing that you've had. So if anybody's online that's had a dream with me in it, and maybe later that you can inbox um, April or myself, uh, one of my guys I'm, uh, with my, is also managing the inbox. But um, if there's anybody online that had a dream with me in it, uh, there's something specific. Now, I'm saying this by faith because it's had a vision of me um, uh, I had a vision of me actually uh, like handing a sword to somebody and I think it's actually a dream. So if there's anybody here uh, or online, I should say, um, that uh, is anyone that is uh, I was popping say, up? There is a, somebody responded to your word of knowledge for their daughter. And um, actually, it's funny, I've had a dream of you. I don't know if, yeah? you're, if it's somebody watching. I've had a dream of you. And Adrian, when y'all were at the conference, um, so I don't know if he's talking to me or multiple people. Or well, it's probably. Talking. Well, let's let's do you, and then uh, and then if someone else might pop up. But okay. that word of knowledge too for the daughter. Uh, we just thank you, Father. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, yeah. That um, that there's a prophetic calling over the daughter when she was a child. There's um, she had a seer gift, and we just thank you, Lord, that. Um, that the enemy is not going to rob that from her. And uh, we thank you, Lord, that um, she's alive for this point of time of, of stepping into a, stepping into the destiny of the prophetic, Lord. And we thank you that, that there's no crossroads anymore, that this, this young lady's free. And we decree yeah. this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Mm. Mm. Now, your dream, April. Yeah. What happened? Um, it was you and it was Adrian. And um, you guys imparted to me that you did at the conference. And then you broke some stuff off of my generational line that kind of I had been battling with. Um, but in the dream, just both of you guys imparted to me. And it was like just a, a manifested a glory. Just a glory. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
Well, Father, we just thank you for the transaction even to another level. You know, I'm glad to get that feedback from you about that generational line thing. Yeah. How are you My feeling? Would you, do you feel like something shifted after that? I did. I did. I, I felt like, um, like the, the kind of, I've, I've had so much, uh, I'm just, I'm just I'm I've had so much generational curses and I don't care if you believe in them or not. The Bible says the sins of the father, you know, they impact the bloodline and I've had to break off so many that's impacted my family. So it's just like another unlocking of another key. Um, trauma, testimonies of trauma, testimonies of abuse has had to been broken off my, my generational line. So, um, it just uh, shifted some things and as far as my gifting kind of unlocked more. Um, whoa. Sorry. Yeah. That's, you know, <laughs> when people are watching, people are watching and they say, well, someone told me there's no generational curses. You're right. There is no generational curses in Christ Jesus. But however, they can still exist with sometimes when our mind paths, you know, can be without knowing by default can be, yeah, it can it can give permission to some of these curses that can exist, and we are not aware of it. And uh, right. but we're in Christ Jesus, we're saved. Uh, Amen. And don't you know? It's nothing to do with salvation, but for us to go forward and be mobilized into into our destiny, uh, sometimes Amen. we've got to renew. It and that's why it's important to renew your mind in Romans uh, Romans twelve. And uh, what April was saying that there's some stuff that needed to be changed and broken off so she can go forward. So that's, I'm glad you said that because sometimes I, I think it's like walking the plank, you're stepping out and I see stuff. Huh. I'm praying over you. I remember some things I don't remember. I remember praying over you and I'm seeing stuff and I'm, I'm breaking it off. And afterwards, I sort of see you in ministry and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, I don't know why I saw the hope I was right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you were you know, right on. But, but God actually, <laughs> yeah, but God actually, God does that, and um, we all have this stuff in our lives. We, ne we, we. Ne anyone says they're arrived, or anyone says they, you know, they got their act together, well, then you're in deception. You know, we all have Come these on. things in our lives we've got to work through. Even though you know, April's a woman of God, I'm a man of God. But man, some of these generals, they got these issues they've got to work through. You know. Come on, Mister. From their past, it's, you've got to make make sure that it's renewing the mind frees us and in principle we've got to go forward uh, and, and and as we go forward when we're free from those mind paths of the generational curses then we start to you start to take on another level of glory you start to take on, on. Uh, uh, you cultivate the kingdom and you start to start to have a major effect in the natural that's why the enemy will become more intimidated by you and you'll try and touch the weak members of your family and that's why you're always going to be walking in the spirit so, Lord, we decree right now over April, Lord, in that dream. We thank you there's an impartation. We thank you for another level of the glory. We thank you for a husband, a mighty man of valor. We just thank you, Lord, that um, uh, I just see that, um, wow. There's a scripture in Proverbs. I never actually said this, but I actually saw a vision of it. I saw this. I don't even know where it is, but it says if you smash a wall with it, Mallet, a snake, you could actually be bitten by a snake. Wow. I don't know if you, have you read that? Bitten. Somewhere, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. if you Google, if you Google okay. that, you'll, if you Google, sometimes it's easy to Google words and you find a scripture. Yeah. If you smash a wall with a, with a hammer, uh, you get bitten by a snake. But what the Lord has shown me that you've been chipping away for quite some years, and there's times where you've really had a breakthrough, but the enemy. With your breakthrough, the enemy, there's some vipers that come out and it's try to attack you. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and what I'm saying, you've, the wall's cracked and there's a hole in it. You smashed a hole in a wall. And I'm just saying this, this is with your ministry and there's a snake that's come out, some vipers that come out and attacked you. But I see, I saw a vision of a wall falling down and I'm seeing a beautiful landscape. Amen. And uh, because you've been chipping away, yeah. Yeah, my husband just had say? a dream of viper, uh, open vision of vipers like two nights ago. Okay, okay. Well, that's a confirmation of this word I'm having. Yeah. And um, 
the vipers can be actually men or women, people in ministry as well. So sorry to say, I mean, those who are young in the Lord, yes, you do get people who are, um, you know, insecure in ministry. It's called human nature. Okay, so it's got nothing to do with ministry. It's got nothing to do with God because God's still God. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that the vipers can be venomous words, people mm -hmm. speaking about accusations and uh, misrepresenting you and uh, trying to shut you down because of the intimidation and the threat that you are. But because you've been chipping away for years, I'm seeing the massive wall crumbling down. Praise God. Down comes the wall. It's almost like a chant I'm hearing. In a way, in a sanctified manner, it's a bit like that Pink Floyd album. <laughs> but, Take it down, Lord. <laughs> it's just fallen down. But I see that beautiful landscape. Wow. And uh, I see you and your husband just hand in hand, just walking into this. It's, you're coming into a place of rest. I will see a lot of green pastures. And that's wow. a metaphor for rest. But the rest isn't just sitting around doing nothing. It's rest of just enjoying the prosperity and the blessing of the Lord and you're doing the work with so much joy oh. and, and, and your children I don't know if you have children but they're going to inherit they're going to inherit that and take on the baton or we just think oh. I just saw that vision so that confirmation that's a confirmation with your husband's dream so Lord we just shut down those vipers yeah come on Lord the brood of vipers, even Jesus had to Whoa. deal with them. Shut that up. So, Lord, we just, you know, we just, you, Lord. Lord, we shut them down. We just put gasoline on them in the, in the Holy Ghost and we just, just burn them up, Father. We thank you for the fire of God. Lord, we thank you for the glory realm. It's been released right now over this family, amazing family. And I'm not saying this because you're interviewing me. This is just a spontaneous word I'm getting for you. <laughs> that, uh, but if somebody else is online had any dreams with me in it, that's fine. But um, uh, because it is scriptural. Let me just c confirm this yeah. so people don't think that I'm trying to bring glory to myself and that's the last thing I want to do. But, but what happens is Saul, the, who became Paul, on the road to Damascus, he was, you know, he had such an impartation and knocked him off his feet. And some people think it's a horse, but doesn't say that. Adrian Bill corrected me on that one. <laughs> but but um, <laughs> what happened was uh, uh, he was bl temporarily blind. Temporarily, he had temporarily had blindness. And, but he says he had a vision of the night of a man called Ananias coming to him. Come on. And uh, and there was an impartation, and he was, you know, then he had this encounter with the Lord through Ananias. So it's very scriptural, okay. Amen. So and there's other things too with a man from Macedonia with Paul, yeah. and um, uh, so um, uh, if you're watching and and you did have anything like that, just 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 let us know, and I'll pray yeah, for you before. Yeah, there's Aaron Packer. You know those guys. They're close friends. Ah, yeah, yes. He had a vision. He had a vision. Of, a dream. Sorry, a dream. I'm scrolling back. Fantastic. Through. Yeah, my husband posted a scripture that you talked about. Ecclesiastes 10 and 11 and Job 1, 5 through 10 about whoever breaketh the head, the serpent shall bite him. Um, That's scroll. it. Aaron, it was during the time after you left our church shortly after two years um, Aaron had a dream with you, and it had something to do with a microphone. I'm trying to, there's so many comments. Scroll them back. Um, I had a dream They're with great people. I love those guys. Yeah, yeah. Aaron said, I had a dream with you, handing a microphone to me, and other dreams as well. So he's had multiple ones. Yeah. So I handed the microphone to her. To Aaron. Yeah. That's right. Aaron Packer. That's, yeah. And, yeah, his wife Beth. I know you activated her in a bunch of dreams. Yeah, they're great. They're great guys. I, I love mean, them. Yeah, we'll we probably need to Kenya go back right there. Guys, yeah, we went. Oh, to did you? Yeah, yeah, I love those guys. And Troy, their 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 friend also Troy. Those guys are amazing. Yeah, I miss you guys. Anyway, um, the microphone is kind of like it's interesting because I had a vision of giving a sword to a person. Wow. And uh, in a way, the microphone, because uh, oh, she prophetically released the word, it's kind of like a sword. Well, when I was in my rock days, I just went in like somebody. <laughs> <I went. laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, no, I'm joking. Um, but um, but uh, I just decree right now, 
in the name of Jesus that there's a transaction right now. And I just see that there's it's time for her to um it's it's the wife that had the dream, right? It was the husband. Oh sorry, husband Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Aaron, yeah. Okay, well both of them, I think it's time for them to where there's going to be such an impartation. It's kind of like handing the baton. Well, I've got twenty percent of my battery left, but anyway, um, it's like it's like handing the baton, handing the microphone. But it's also a prophetic word. It's like what I have, the the kind of the 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 prophetic ministry that I have. I see that there's a transaction, oh. and that's kind of like handing the sword as well, because I saw that in a vision. So, Aaron, wherever you are, just hold hands with your wife. Maybe she might not be there, but I just, if you're replaying this, yeah, I just yeah. decree the impartation mm -hmm. right now over you guys. And uh, I just thank you for the love of the Lord over them right now. We just pro prophesy the fire of God. And I just thank you when you speak, when speak, when Aaron speaks, it's not him speaking, but the Spirit of the Lord speaking yeah. through him. Mm -hmm. And we thank you there's a river of revelation coming out of his mouth, and everything that touches turns to life. Shakara, ba, ba, ba. We release that. Poof. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is fun. We should do this again one day. Yeah, do it. Whenever. Just reach out. <laughs> Whenever. I love, I love this. I mean, people just are hungry online. It's just a platform for Jesus. But uh, thank you for that word for my kids because I've been just been declaring that they carry the baton. It's like my heart's desire is to impact yeah. generations. Yeah. You know? yeah. Impact. Praise God. That's just, it's a, I think it's every mother's desire, right? <laughs> Should be. Yeah, it's very natural. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Mm. Well, praise God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Feel the glory really heavy now. It's yeah. <laughs> it's getting stronger. It's getting stronger. <laughs> oh, God. Just, we just released the glory of everybody watching. Yes, Lord. This battery on the phone. The Lord. Yeah. Shift our atmosphere. Mm. Oh. Mm. Lost to, yeah, just whatever, everyone who's watching, right? I'm feeling a bit slurry in my words. Yeah, me too. Everybody who's watching, <laughs> I thank you for the, there's a transaction that's taking place, Lord. Yeah. We thank you that the atmosphere is completely transformed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I'm just feeling led right now in the glory. It's so heavy. Um, even that, that encounter I had, like you said, the Lord keeps bringing up the sword again. So, Lord, I just thank you that you're giving people watching the revelation of the sword of the Lord with authority. We just impart new ground of authority in the name of Jesus Christ that you are the sword of the Lord. Amen. Use the sword of the Lord. And I even see in the Lord unlock for discerning of spirits. I just impart to you right now that gift of discerning of spirits that you will discern both good and evil. Whoa. Amen. And that your family will be transformed as a result. I just declare that over you that your family will be transformed as a result of discerning of spirits. You're going to be that transitional person. I just believe you're going to feel this when you play the replay, that you're going to be that transitional bloodline anointed person to bring the fullness of the atonement of Jesus Christ in your bloodline. And you're going to shift your bloodline from a place of curse to a place of blessing, that generational blessing. You're going to have the key to yeah. unlock it in Jesus' yeah. name. Whoa. Cool. To the glory. You're going to shift your bloodline to the glory. Hallelujah. I love it. Thank you, Jesus. Shakana Baruko Sike. Hallelujah. Ooh. And will we just cut off every backstabbing? I just see people getting backstabbed. And, and whenever the God gives you a word of knowledge, it's just to break it. So we don't always have to know who. We don't have to know why. We just cut those word curses and that backstabbing spirit off of you right now. Yeah. The harassment, the aggravation. Remember that that we just do what we do for an audience of one. The Lord yeah. says, "Let it go." We just do what we do for an audience. Of one. Amen. Praise God. Shakana baruku sike. Yeah, strong presence here right now. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I see. Hallelujah. I see people even getting keys and dreams. That some of you guys, as as you watch this, that that since that's what he carries so much of, I just see the keys, revelatory keys. So I think after watching this, people are just going to have more dreams with you, Adam. Mm. Mm. More dreams of that unlocking. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. I thank you for. Supernatural encounters in the night, Lord. I thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for the five God has released over every individual that's watching this right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. And I just wondering if everybody who's watching this could pray for me. Uh, I'm going to be going to, uh, I'm going to be back on tour again next week. And wow. uh, in a week from now, I'm um, going to tour throughout Europe. Uh, so if you can pray for me, even the Ukraine. Okay. Um, so I, I really would appreciate the prayers and the prayer support uh, because yeah. you guys, um, you know, it's, it's pretty full on. It's going to be a long seven-week tour. So wow. I just really appreciate you guys to pray for me. Amen. If you get anything, that would be awesome. Okay. I've got a few friends. I can actually see the comments popping up now. It's, 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 yeah. Oh. Hallelujah. Ukraine, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah. 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 Kiev, yeah, city. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of wild because I just got a prophetic key necklace. And they, and they had a key that was Ukraine. Boo. And in it was just, I just felt such an angelic. When they put the necklace on me, I got hit with the glory. And so, Lord, any of those, uh, we just say, Lord, you dispatch the angels for Ukraine right now. That we just ask you, Lord, that you send them forth for the harvest. You send forth the harvest angels for that Ukraine. There's protection angels, Lord. Whoa. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on. Glory, the miraculous. I thank you, Lord, that you're even sending forth the miraculous. And that you, he's, I just see you unlocking new revelation for the Ukraine. Come on. Come on. So, Lord, I, I just it. thank you. You're unlocking revelation. You're giving him strategies. You're giving him downloads. And you're giving him keys to unlock the doors in the heavenlies. Woo. To open up the regions in the Ukraine. Thank you, thank Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just see Shut the up, glory, up, 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 fire, up. presence. As you go forth, I just see it. The breaker anointing breaking out for that region. Mm. Mm. Lord, the breaker goes before him to Ukraine. So we just declare that over him, that he goes forth with that angelic protection, that angelic help, the, the angels for, for breakthrough, even the uh, revel revelatory realm for the downloads for that region, that it goes forth with just like that sword, that sword he was talking about. And uh, whoa, I think Lord's even going to give you like keys for to bring more prosperity. Ukraine. Amen. So Amen. I declare that over you that that revelatory realm that God's going to give you such a download on how to shift things for them. Because you're, you know, you're prophet to the nations, Lord. And I thank you for uh, uh, the rest, the rest that's going to, I just declare a rest over him as he travels, as you give him the downloads. Um, but there will be such an ease over him that it won't be a hard wall. I just think he's yeah. going forth and sending the breaker before him. Yeah. Thing. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. That's going to be awesome. You're going to have to share with mm. me what ease he gives you. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> I will definitely. It's going to be a. Uh, it's the first time for me for the Ukraine. So yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's the, awesome. The doors are open up because I ministered in Germany and doors have opened up for the Ukraine. So there's some Russian churches that I minister in uh, wow. as well. So yeah, yeah, in, the, in, in Germany. Wow, that's mm. awesome. Mm. So you guys just be praying for Adam. And if, if these, uh, I know people always ask me after we get off, how can I sow a seed? If they want to sow a seed into your life, what's the best way to do that? Um, there's, um, I'm just going to connect my phone to the battery. Otherwise oh. I'm going to... Yeah, just no, hang on, just bear with me for a minute. Um, the best way to do that is to go to the um, hang on, is to voice of fire ministries, okay. voice of fire ministries.org. Okay. Okay? okay, 
Um, and uh, there's, uh, there's a PayPal, uh, there's a PayPal uh, s- sort of uh, link there that you can, if you wish, if you want to sow into the ministry, feel free to. Uh, we, you know, I don't demand finance, but uh, there is, you know, with, when you're in full-time ministry, um, there's a, there's unfortunately finance is something that's needed with traveling on the road all the time. Okay. So, um, I, you know, if you want to say that'd be wonderful, but, um, uh, also praying is very important. Praying yeah. for me as well. Um, I really, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's being on the road is great. I see, I see a lot of amazing things. I, I, it blows my mind. Some of the <laughs> things I've seen good and bad, wow. but, um, but being on the road is, is pretty full on all the time. I'm probably on the road 10 months a year. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. So I'm sort of kind of like walking the earth. <laughs> like, <laughs> a little bit yeah, of you yeah. out of there and all these time <laughs> zone differences. People don't understand yeah. the time zone differences. And I've said this before. Someone once on the plane said, where are you from? And I looked at my chair and I went, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I'm from. I'm from here, <laughs> but uh, but it's good. I mean, I I want to encourage you. If God's opened the door for full time ministry, it's it's fantastic. But long as you keep the connection, the relationship with God, come on, and uh, don't lose focus with that. If without that, I I, 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 I couldn't do it. You know. Amen. Yeah, people um, say they're going to be praying for you, so that's awesome. But you know, I'll just say, you know. If you honor a prophet and you get a prophet's reward, it's just also sowing into, I know, you know, a lot of people don't have a lot of teaching about sowing, but God has spoke to me and my husband over and over again. So I just want to say, if he, especially if he gave you a word, sow into that, honor the man of God, and just do whatever the heart leads. Like you said, airplane tickets cost money, hotels cost money when you go to the people yeah. don't have a grid for that, but it's true. Yeah. It's money to share the gospel. It's like feast and famine for me. Yeah. So um, uh, it'd take, it is you know, like I used to be a businessman and, and it's been to be quite a comfortable life. But, um, but it is, it is that you walk by faith. Being in full time ministry is walking by faith. So yeah. I really appreciate your sewing. And, um, uh, but, um, you know, God provides for me. So I'm not going to demand from anybody. Yeah, but if yeah, God yeah. speaks to you, God speaks to you about sewing, you do it. And there's a, there's actually, a profit's reward, and you're not buying it, and I'm not selling it, right. but there is a profit's reward. You freely receive and freely give. So, Yeah, amen. Mm. I better let you go to bed. <laughs> hey, I, pre- I really appreciate you having me, uh, April, and uh-huh. uh, God blessings to your husband as well. Um, Thank you. Really appreciate you guys, and we should do it again. Yeah, yeah. I really appreciate you coming on, especially this late at night after you've been traveling. So, uh, yeah. If you have any prayer requests, Adam, when you're on the road, that me and my husband can lift you up. Besides, oh, prayer. please. Yeah, this message. Please. Is- yeah, I've got some prayer intercessors, but if you guys can do that for me too, that would be even Amen. better. You know? Amen. Um, uh, what I was going to say is that uh, this is actually, I don't usually do these Facebook <laughs> things, but, you know, I really enjoyed this. So um, oh, if I'm going to do it again, I'll do it for you guys again. It's good fun. All right. We'll take you up on that sometime. <laughs> you let me know your schedule is more crazier than mine. I can yeah, well, I'll be back in September. I'll be back um, in Adelaide in September for a week. So let's do something then if you want. I mean, I'm sure you've got plenty of other guests, but I'm saying if you run out of guests, let me know. Oh, no, we lo- I really enjoyed having you. <laughs> yeah. And just love you guys. And- mm, yeah. All right. Oh, be blessed. I mean, I, you know, Adrian, too, uh, Adrian's really got some amazing revelations. So. Come on, yeah. I'll reach out to him. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to have you on this plan in September and you can share many times and Yeah. God does in Ukraine. I want to share. Yeah, I'll share what happens to Ukraine. I'm sure there's going to... I'll share about the miracles that have already yeah. happened in heaven, but it's going to manifest on earth. <laughs> Come on. Love it. Yeah. yeah amen. Huh. All, right. All right. Well, bless you guys. Love you guys. Love you too. And we'll keep in touch. All right. Okay. Thanks. See ya. Bye. And everybody, that is another glory story for you. So I would just like to challenge you on the different things that you heard my guest talk about on the glory today to just get alone with God. 
and asked him to help you cultivate his presence in your everyday life and see what kind of glory story that God wants you to be a part of.